Hey, what? welcome to the January 2010. January, my I know, it's still goodness. November, isn't it? But uh, it's January 2010. No, it's, it's January. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> classic series tasting. And we're starting 2010 with some really incredible wines. For Absolutely. one, uh, by now you've been to our blog site, I'm sure. You've seen Ed's comments, and we're up and running with a great blog and talking about wines and all the things about wine and, and have some fun with talking about wine. We're speaking about the future because I don't even know what I've written yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of those Star Trek movies, you know? <laughs> Where's Ron Serling when you need him, huh? This is a 2007 Cellar Select, which is a Chardonnay Sauvignon Blanc Gewürztraminer blend. My fave, huh? Yeah. From Washington. From Washington, my favorite state. Absolutely. Which, I think Washington State uh, Chardonnay is excellent. And uh, I'm not that crazy about the Southern Blancs generally. And then the Gerstrin is one of the staples of the Washington State wine lineup. But the funny thing about this one, what I'm interesting about it, is that Gewürz, even though it's only 5%, you still you get it, right? Yeah. You get well, it it's right Well, it's very, very aromatic grape, Gewürztraminer, you know, Muscatty, uh, uh, Muscat derivative, one of the oldest grapes known to man. And uh, an interesting story about Kamiak, it's, it's, it's uh, named after a, a, uh, an Indian chief, Kamiak, or Kamakian, I believe. Did he like, uh, did he know. like... He was, um, he, was, he, was, he was probably Lebanese, Kamakian. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, he's Armenian. Did he, did he like <laughs> Gerushmin or something? It must have. Huh? Uh, well, actually, the reason why he's so important is because he's a guy that basically uh, was the first to irrigate the Columbia Valley, which is now why people can grow grapes there, because without water, you can't grow any grapes. And he figured out how to do that back in the early 1800s, and to they, that this is their tribute to uh, Kamakian. What's interesting in this wine is that the, I mean the varietals that they blend are completely atypical. They're, they took a Burgundy grape, they took a German grape, and they took a uh, wow a south of France. I mean a, a Bordeaux grape, and and put it together pretty nicely. Beautiful, and that's a you know front line is 12.99 and. The first mm. bottle is eight ninety nine, and the reorders are six ninety nine. That is amazing. That's got a wall of fruit. I in forgot it. how good that was. Just a, you know, it just nice literally fat all middle. over all over your mouth with with flavor. But you, it's, you, I taste the Chardonnay. Yeah, I smell bit. the Gewurz demeanor. Yeah, Sauvignon Blanc are just in there, kind of. Well, but Sauvignon Blanc gives you the acidity. It gives you that little piquancy at the finish. It's you know, it's really nice. Mm. This is definitely a ninety two one. That is great. And I'll give that an 92 as well. Mm. You know, sometimes I don't get to taste these wines since I buy them until uh, until we stand here and do it. And I'm not shocked, but it just pleases me to no end that the wines of this quality are here. Well, I'm shocked. He said the price already. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> A little off-camera stuff going on. This is the Monte Blanco Chilean Cabernet Sauvignon 2009. 2009. What took them How so long? How can that be? That can be. Huh? It can be. You know. It can be because they're six months ahead of us, so they've been in the bottle for mm. six months longer than our ha wines have. And boy, is that all Cabernet? Is yeah. that all Chilean Cabernet in the nose? Well, it's it's actually got some nice uh, Central Valley, Central mm. Central Coast maybe not Central no, Valley. Central Valley. So oh, Central Valley of Chile. Right. Mm. 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 Wow, that is a big mouthful of wine. This wine is um, love the balance made from a winery that has spent a lot of money making uh, putting together a phenomenal facility. Hired probably the most famous winemaker in the world right now, um, Michel Roland, who consults in Burgundy and Bordeaux and all kinds of places and uh, makes a gob of money. He's like the world's traveling winemaker. And you get that you get that French style. Yeah, you do. You? It's very French style. Very you know, I mean, very Bordeaux-like, and they're they're doing a lot of that in Chile, and it's spectacular. And uh, what's the first bottle go out at uh, eleven ninety nine or ten ninety nine? Well, let's like take that. a look at my cheat sheet here, and it's uh, twelve ninety nine is the shelf price, ten ninety nine. First bottle, right? And you get it for seven ninety nine if you want to buy some more. Fabulous Cabernet for uh, eight bucks, and that's a ninety two. Absolutely, yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Isn't that the same shirt you're wearing in the December? <laughs> <laughs> I guess ask you the same question. <laughs> I think I said earlier that uh, the woman I opened the door for at Starbucks called me uh, the Marlboro Man, which I, I consider that a compliment, even without a jacket. You know, the leather jacket with the fur all over it. Oh, uh, no, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's do the red wine uh, for the alternate. This is the Kunza. I think it's a Cabernet as well. And uh, oh, it's actually a Carmenier Cabernet. Carmenier Cabernet. Yeah, it's, a, this it's is also 2009. Yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, Carmenere, actually. Carmenere, right. And what it, Carmenere 
up until, this is an amazing mm. story actually, up until the 90s was thought to be Merlot in Bordeaux. They didn't, they, they're growing Carmenere and they're calling it Merlot, but it ends up being Carmenere, which is very similar to Merlot, but it's not the same grape. And so they, they send this quote Merlot over to Chile, and when they figure out in Bordeaux that it's not Merlot, they go, in, they go to Chile and they go, oh my God, it's not Merlot here either. <laughs> so they start calling it Carmenere. Of course, the French would never admit that it's not Merlot. So they but just it is a distinctly different grape. It is a different grape. When but it's, it's bottled by itself, and, you know, this is predominantly Carmenere, but boy, I get them in here and they're, they're rosier than a Merlot mm -hmm. typically is. They also have more acid than, than, than typically mm -hmm. Merlot has. Yep. But this is a great blend and a great balance. Look at that, look at the color. I mean, look, I mean, look, at, like, look at the whoa, legs on this see through the thing. Wow, this is a bad boy. Lots of stuff going on. This is a wine you definitely can lay down for a few years and it'll just keep getting better. It'll keep, you know, uh, getting um, a little bit more e easier to boy, drink. Just before the finish is that fruit character yeah. that comes out, this blueberry, ras blueberry, ras exactly. ras blueberry character and a little bit of cranberry in there. And then there's enough acid to carry that fruit all the way through. Right. Is what you're, is what you're like really it. saying, right? That's what I'm, that's what I'm really saying. Okay. I didn't know that until just now, but that <laughs> is really what I am saying. Um, the uh, this first This ultimate wine is uh, one out at, the shelf prices are right. This is 11 dollars and the first one went out at eight ninety nine. dollars I mean, this, $8.99? This is no wonder you're complaining about not making any money. Six ninety nine for a reorder. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I better check and make sure I'm making some money. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, listen, you're not here to make money. You're here to spread the wealth of the vine. That's okay? right. Crying out loud. All right. It's a 92 for sure. Yeah, I go with a 93 because I'm playing one-upsmanship again yeah. <laughs> with the Marlboro right. Man. <laughs> the white wine alternate. Um, this is a rolling screw cap Chardonnay. You'll never guess the vintage based on the color. A rolling, yes. They also make a wine called Standing Still, I think, uh, or something like that. Yeah, right. Wow, what an exotic nose that is. Okay, would you guess this to be a 2006? Look at the color, it's so youthful. It is youthful. And the, the chartreuse tones in this? Yeah. And this is New South Wales, so it's Australian. Mm -hmm. I forgot how great this wine is. Mm. Wow. Oak. Lots of oak. Not, I don't get a lot of oak. Get a lot. I, get, I get some wood. I get in some there. oak, but it's it's a it's a beauty. You know, there's really some nice wines, uh, some mm. nice flavors going on in there. This was put together by a company that uh, uh, Lane Nathan, I think, uh, wines, and they're they're making wines all over the all over the world and. Um, Obviously, well oiled and well healed, and, and they're doing a great job with uh, all of their properties. And okay, also, I got to ask you a question. Yeah, not this is not a shirt question. Good, because that's like <laughs> this isn't a shirt show. <laughs> how is it that they plant this grape, they pick it, they ferment it, they age it, and obviously it has oak in it? They've done something with oak. They fermented it or stored it in right. oak. They bottle it up. They put it on a boat. They drove it to <clears throat> drove it. They shipped it to America. Drove it to my warehouse, and I can sell it for eight ninety nine, and then reorders at six ninety nine. Well, is obviously, somebody, does anybody make any money on this? You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, here's here's the deal. The deal is that they're they're you know you how much of this did you buy, Paul? I mean, a thousand cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a whole container. You know, when you take a whole container across the the, the ocean, they charge you the same amount of money as a half container. Yeah, but in the world of wine, since you do our online messaging, yeah. The glass costs money, the right. cork costs money, or the screw cap, right. the label costs money, and the labor to do all that. I mean, it's almost impossible. Yeah, but like guess that. what? In today's world, all those prices are starting to come down a little bit because they're not selling as much as they used to. Ah, that's it. <laughs> you know, right. It's called supply and demand, and while we think we're in a very, very romantic industry, the wine industry, it still has to suffer the vagaries of supply and demand, just like people who sell windshield wipers. That's right. First, first bottle uh, went out at... Uh, Oh yeah, we were at six ninety nine. I gave it a ninety one. Yeah, I'm I'm at a ninety one. What a great wine for yeah, that price. Six ninety nine. See you at the limited series. Cheers.